put that. Hi guys, welcome to our channel about time. I'm joined with my friend Chris, Tamboon799. Hey. I'm Quran. It's complicated, as Arthur would put it, underscore KH. Um, I'm gonna let Chris take it from here uh, and tell you what we're doing today. Um, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Yeah. So we're just reacting to our couple of our good friends video that they just made. It's a fantasy watches uh, live show that they did, um, I think, a few days ago. So we're just reacting to what they created, and hopefully it's fun for everybody because some of them are pretty pretty wild, I think. So Absolutely. A lot of, uh, yeah, it's a lot of what, you know, what us in the watch community kind of like or wish were created. So we're just going to see how it goes. Um, Absolutely. And actually, so let's let's tell everybody that who react, who who's, uh, started that video. It's Tick Tick Room and his lovely wife, uh, Stephanie. That's Arthur and Stephanie. She watches the world. It's um, they're on their channel on Scottish wa Scottish Watches Live. Um, and their um, their handle is it's called the A dot D. <laughs> and Arthur actually really inspired me um, because he changed the name from Arthur and Dan show to Arthur and Darling Wife. Uh, I wish I could uh, <laughs> actually take a picture of Stephanie's face at that point, but I'm going to change our thing to you know about time dot C eight or about dot time ck is going to be about <laughs> about time conceited quran uh <laughs> instead of chris and quran but chris you know we i we, we looked at the video um and we were watching it and i just realized something though oh, um yeah. you know um we are definitely and guys please let us know this we are definitely not asian yeah, I wouldn't say we're full Asian. Yeah, because, you know, on the video, the first video, you know, your first watch was a calculator watch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's, that's an oxymoron right there. And with the struggle that we've been having uh, with, uh, you technical. know, we took help from yeah, technical <laughs> issues with everything, <laughs> um, you know, um, uh, we've had so many out. issues and Photoshop issues. We've taken out from Arthur, who actually was born in Pondicherry, so he's half Indian. So that's where his um, <laughs> IT skills come from. Uh, so anyway, so let's uh, with further ado, yeah, let's, uh, let's um, start um, a little uh, uh, clip from um, Arthur and Stephanie's show. Okay. Oh, by the way, cheers. <laughs> cheers, Karan. Um, I have my Cartier Santos Galbly, or however you say it, um, and I'm in a very like two tone mood. I got like all my two tone stuff on right now, which is which is just kind of fun. But I love this watch. I got it like a little over a year ago. Um, it's a great price. It was misadvertised as a quartz, and got it for a good deal. And it's automatic. Um, oh, I love it. It's great. Like if you need present ideas for your like your girl, this. This is a great one and a great price point. Yeah, the, yeah. that's like a, an 80s model, I think, 80s, early 90s. Yeah, I think yeah. late 80s. Um, yeah, yeah. But the value is pretty crazy. That's cool. Yeah. I, I love that watch. Uh, and I'm also bringing a little bit of guilt here today with my Peter Black Bay 58, uh, probably my most worn watch. And uh, I thought it'd go good with the green sweater. So there you go. <laughs> All right, so um, those are beautiful timepieces. Um, actually, the Galbe, um, you know, Stephanie's Galbe is a classic. I was telling you about my pet that just showed up. And um, <laughs> of course, thank you, Arthur. Uh, that Black Bay 58 is also fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, so while, um, uh, you know, we also want to show off our timepieces. Um, I'm going to put a disclaimer up as well before the show starts and we actually discuss, um, you know, uh, all the other timepieces that have been modified in the, on this channel. And also please like and subscribe and hit the bell icon. But here's my disclaimer right there. <laughs> right? Please uh, follow the rules. Uh, <laughs> and please. <laughs> oh, what are you wearing, Karan? Um, I am actually wearing my old faithful, which uh, I love. It is um, 
we have to figure this out, but it is the bronze Zenit pilots. Um, oh, way cool. Um, yeah, it's a 25 piece limited edition that was gifted to me, um, particularly from Zenit for having some great watch sales for the year. So yeah, and um, awesome. what yeah. do you have on Chris? So I, I'm wearing my Grand Seiko SBGH267. Um, Which you did not buy from me and I'm pissed off. <laughs> Yeah, I think I called you and you said you didn't um, you didn't have it. So <laughs> that is all hogwash. And if I could curse <laughs> on this channel, yourself. yeah. Um, but yeah, I, remember that that logo you put on that pen right in the front. Just that's that's for Chris. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. Well, I, I've definitely enjoyed it. I've had it, um, but I I got it about a year after it came out. So it's like yours, a limited edition as well. It's um, because you were asking me for like some ridiculous amount of a discount when you know oh, you didn't want to spend yeah. retail. So I find yeah. discounts on everything. So yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> wrong, uh, wrong idiot here. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's uh it's been a great piece. I um I've kind of gone back to it. I was wearing uh, my Seamaster for a while, so um, I decided to give this another shot. So yeah, yeah let's, it's a great pen piece. For sure. Let's go forward and uh, let's talk about the first piece that was designed by my good friend Arthur. Yep. So let me take your time. We're Asian. We make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, we're. Yeah, I know. We went over this only fifty times. <laughs> like one of my favorite watches. If they just made these tweaks. So, I present to you the. Tick Tick Broom El Camaro. So what this is, is I'm often stuck between the two sizes they make for the El Camaro. The traditional 38 millimeter, um, which is, yes, it's the traditional size, but it feels a little small to me. And the 42, which 42 is a reasonable size. I can wear it just fine. But for some reason on the El Camaro, it just ends up feeling a little large for, for me on the wrist. Uh, so what I did was I took my favorite El Primero case, which is the one they've used on these uh, recent revival models and the manufacturer edition, uh, the one with all the three blue subdials, and I sh and I upsized it to 40 millimeter diameter. Then I know the original 1969 El Primero had a date, but I'm a no date kind of guy. I love the symmetry, so through the date, it's gone uh, through my excellent imperceptible Photoshop job there. Uh, <laughs> and then I, you know, I, I like the manuf manufacturer edition that they did. Uh, I think that's the only one in steel with this revival case that's currently in production. Um, but the three blue sub dials, it's not really sort of like true to the history. And I kind of like it when there's a little more variety. So I'm going with a silver sub running second sub dial, a gray, hour counter and a blue minute counter and to me that's the el primero i want i think it would be one of my absolute um favorite watches if they just made it so yeah. what do you think of that i absolutely love and love 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 what arthur did there um in fact while that while watching that video I, in fact, even commented there um, saying that, um, you know, this should be presented to LVMH and um, JCB, as in Jean-Claude Biret, should see it to make those changes. The only one thing which I would have changed is that no. underlap overlap on the hour subdials, seconds yeah. and hour subdials. Uh, so, you know, I know Arthur is a very, you know, about symmetry, symmetry and everything, but though it is symmetric. Uh, you know, but I, I like the one when it goes under, then over. Um, right, right. You know, it's like, uh, otherwise it looks like hiding something under the carpet. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that is yeah. a little speedy there. Absolutely, uh, I, absolutely love what he did there. Um, you know, uh, of lately, I have been wearing, as uh, a lot of you know, that I've been wearing a lot of timepieces uh, without a date. Um, you know, mainly, and I've, be, I've really begun to like it because who cares how this year has gone, what day it is of the week, well, <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, For sure. 
Um, I actually, I, I think I did like the three blue subdial version, um, just because it gives it that uh, very monochrome look, um, mm -hmm. kind of like the the Snoopy, but. Uh, it covers that base. And I think for me, I would have liked the striking 10th movement. Um, it just like the standard chronograph is great, but I think having a, something special on it, either that or like a flyback um, that they have uh, for the brigades and pieces like that, I think are really, it makes it more fun to use when, when you can see it spinning really quickly or uh, whatever it is. It's a, uh, I think it's an added benefit to the movement. So it sure is. It sure is. And um, you know, but you know what? You can't have it all, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Watch. But I, I actually like the traditional chrono with the striking ten. And uh, while you, um, you know, of course, go and switch to the next screen because we are again Asian, so we take time. I'll put the <laughs> disclaimer on. Yeah. So that everybody knows. Uh, yeah. Yep. See, we're making mistakes already. <laughs> uh, the I, I think this bonus is not practically perfect in every way, but actually perfect in every way. Um, and Karan, thank you for getting this one for me. Um, I, I love it, like truly stepping back. And, and I know I've like gone on way too much about this on Instagram and other things before, but if I was going to design a watch for me truly from scratch, this is it. Like perfect size unbelievably comfortable really cool movement the dial is stunning there's a little bit of space stuff um those of you who don't know me I, i'm a big space geek and, and work in space and then you know just like a touch of cooling i went a little overboard with the, the diamond vessel but i think this is like the perfect modern ladies watch for me so anyway zenith already nailed it but with that i'm going to switch to a Canarai that i would design okay so so, so this was no modifications at all, and I just wanted to bring it out there because remember, it's conceited Quran. Um, this was a timepiece that you know, of course, um, Arthur spoke to me about a while ago for Stephanie, and Stephanie ended up purchasing it for me. And uh, it's so I just wanted to talk about it. Thank you, Stephanie, for the shout out. Love you, love you for that. Uh, love you guys for that. But um, it's so also it coincided when I actually sent a picture to. Arthur uh, with the Zenith advertisement and it was the back of the model with the watch in the front and that lady looked exactly exactly like <laughs> Stephanie and I think that nailed it I'm pretty sure <laughs> thank yeah. you Mike I'll take that it very rarely comes out of your mouth right there <laughs> I, I will highlight that comment and take it to my grave um don't let no, it go I to your head wanted... <laughs> oh it will always. So anyway. <laughs> well, it's a, that is an awesome piece. Um, it is. You know, it's one of the few that are specifically uh, with females in mind, and uh, I think mm -hmm. they executed it perfectly in that in that way. Just, you know, a lot of times nowadays, women will just all watches are kind of uh, unisex. You know, besides the extreme ends of it, and They're I taking think over the world. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. Women power, baby. Women power. Yeah. But not so, many people know about this. This comes with three additional straps, four straps in total. What a oh. stunning watch. Uh, Timepiece, if I wow. may say. Yeah. Uh, automatic. And this dial is, when you see it in person, it actually looks way better than pictures. Yeah, it really, it really pops. Um, yep. So we can go to the next one. Absolutely. Let's. Looks like a panel. So here's your first real one now that you've just uh, uh, okay. stopped bragging about your. Uh, your, your <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, as you'll see here in my excellent PowerPoint skills, um, Photoshop editing job, I love the 38 millimeter weights. I think they're great. I think it's um, uh, kind of bullshit that they're not super waterproof. So, I decided to add. Um, uh, to make it waterproof at least 100 meters. Um, and then I also added, you know, a part of my language for fuck's sake on it. But like, really, this <laughs> actually has some water resistance. It's totally ridiculous that, um, that it doesn't. And, you know, I'm just going to wait for a little while for it to uh, like come on the pre owned market and, you know, drop price. But I, I love this watch. 
Um, the other thing that I do, which I think you'll see a theme throughout, is I took out the gate window. Um, I just, I don't think it suits the swatch. And I think Panerai's numerals are so cool. Like I would yeah. love to have the, the three there. Um, so I found a font in PowerPoint that was not anywhere close, but whatever. Um, so that's, um, that's my Panerai. All right, so what did you think of that? So I'm gonna go back to my notes again. I agree. <laughs> Absolutely agree about the water resistancy on this timepiece. Um, very shocking that Panerai did not do that. Um, again, again, I'm like literally going back to my date thing. I would love a date on that timepiece because of that dial. I think they could contrast the date very well. Mm -hmm. But Diver, <laughs> this is actually a very funny comment right there. Uh, yeah. I think there's uh, a paddock uh, dress watches with more water resistance. Well, yes, and absolutely. And, you know, Panerai is so good with straps. Why cannot, why can't they dye a rubber strap in that color? Oh, uh, I know. You yeah. know, and That's take the officine Panerai out of that. Just do a classic rubber mm -hmm. strap, um, you know, in that color, that nude color. It is so gorgeous. It looks so great. A baby blue, if you had to have for that baby blue dial, yeah. oh, that those numbers that they have. It's such a good timepiece. But yes, I love um, the beep beep, um, you know, that uh, <laughs> Stephanie put up there. That's hilarious. Uh, I don't know how YouTube works. And just so you know, guys, we're here in for the money, so we won't be cursing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want to our channel to get monetized. So remember to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there at some point. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually, it actually really works with the white dial and the, and the strap. Um, I've definitely gotten more, you know, when I first started um, getting into watches, I was all black dial, you know, the Rolex sub uh, and that classic watch look. But now I've kind of grown on um white dials and the light colored strap it's just a very casual look that i i think works really well so yeah um, no it, it, it is gorgeous water resistancy very yeah. important perspiration could make a difference guys i'm not sure i forgot what the millimeters were but i think that's Chris, it's perfect for you yeah <laughs> well I, I don't wear 47 millimeter pilot watches quite often. <laughs> well i'm sorry man <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on to the next one. <laughs> ah, yes, my Tanner, I suggested. Uh, so I have a PAM 560, which is the base dial 44 millimeter in the sort of, in the Betterini case, for those that know the, the PAM cases, which is the one they designed in the 90s to be for sort of like the modern revival. but. This watch here is basically the PAM 372, which is um, currently made in 47 millimeters, sort of one of the more true historical models. It's got the like dirty beige loom, it's got the gold hands, um, and the 1950s case, which is a lot more three dimensional and really shows its roots to sort of the original pocket watch cases that were that were made into um, the first Panerai. So, I think it's one of their absolute prettiest watches. My only change is I shrunk it to 44 because for me, that's a great size. I know it breaks the trueness to the legacy of the watch, but I would buy that in a heartbeat if they made it 44. I don't believe, and someone can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe they make a 1950s case Panerai in 44 millimeters without a date. Tell me if I'm wrong. Because I would like to know with a base dial, just clean, simple, yeah. So, so love this watch. It's I actually um, really contemplated uh, wearing it today. Um, I've been promising Arthur that I should um, um, send that timepiece to him for him to test uh, because it would change his mind. Um, one thing I would not agree on that was changing the size, but I, I do get where he's coming from. 
Um, I've got very little to speak about this timepiece because I would not change a damn thing on it, except for my beef with Panerai back in the day when they had announced this timepiece being a special edition, and then they just okay. changed it to an annual edition. I love that additional plexiglass crystal, as we call Hesalite today, uh, with the fancy names, um, in the box. But um, just, just love, love, love that watch um, because it's so good. I wish it was a special edition and then people would love that 47 millimeter if it was special uh, mm -hmm. instead of limited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I thought it was good. It's very simple and clean. And I think that's a little bit more true to, you know, the original Panerai, I guess, design language that they, when they were first making watches, you know, for the Italian Navy. And, um, you know, I don't think they cared if it was special edition or whatever. <laughs> so uh, I think that's, that's more true to their roots. So I liked, I really liked what he did there. Loved what he did there. Loved. Yeah. So the next one, I think we are with Stephanie. Stephanie's special edition speed sister. So um, I have a First Omegan space, which I love. It's a fantastic CD for me. Um, but one of the frustrations that I have with all of the special editions that come out is that they're all tributes to things that happened decades ago. And like as great as that is, and like those accomplishments are amazing, and it's wonderful to have, um, you know, anniversary editions of moon landing, of the Sufi, like like those are all great. But I would love to see like a Speedmaster that reflects some modern space accomplishments and things that have happened like in the past. Well, I mean, I take past twenty years, but let's say like you know here these are all things that have happened in, in the past couple years. So um, first I'll talk to the pictures, <laughs> uh, you know, on the sub dials here, I have like a picture of the International Space Station because that is like such a testament to what is possible with technology and like, you know, getting all these countries to come together, uh, you know, amazing, amazing accomplishment that people have been looking at space consistently for 20, for 20 years at this point. Um, then I have a Mars rover because that's just epically cool. And I think there should be something to talk about Mars. Um, and then the last of dial is um, uh, in recognition of the first all-female space walk that happened earlier this year. Um, I don't know. It's not a great image, but you get the idea. Like, just some, like, <laughs> Kind of squashed. Yeah. Excellent Photoshop job there. Yeah. Yeah, I was in Photoshop. That was, yeah, that was uh, really well done. Uh, and then on the back, I thought it would be cool to have, like, you know, SpaceX rocket landing. But you know how on the back of a new special edition Snoopy, um, Snoopy's like riding the Apollo capsule yeah, around yeah. the back of the dial. Um, yeah, I'm ignoring physics here, but if Omega could find some way to like make the rocket go up and down, like almost like those <laughs> pens that you like tip over. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, that, that's what the arrow is meant to represent. Like, oh yeah, okay. So that that wouldn't way. actually be on the watch. That's just a, an illustration <laughs> of uh, the motion. Okay, cool, it, cool. Yeah, it would be like under a sapphire, you know, whatever. Find a way to right. make that happen. Right, like, right. Right. Um, and then, you know, more to like a watch watch shape is like, I love the case size of the, um, first Omega phase. It fits me perfect. Um, the standard, <laughs> um, uh, you guys professional case, like the lugs just hanging over my wrist a little bit. It's fine, but it's a pet peeve. And, you know, if I'm dreaming this watch, the price is like probably not going to be like, I, I don't want to spend a lot of money on a watch that's not going to fit me. So I, I it's my design. I can do what I want. I want the first yeah. Omega space. <clears throat> I would also want the 321 movement. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if the 321 movement would fit in this case. I don't really care. I'm ignoring it. Um, <laughs> I think then, it would. I think it would. Okay. Um, and then I would want a flat link bracelet because I think I think those are really cool. Um, so I think I really nailed it with this. Um, <laughs> I don't really think it's at all. It just seems. Um, I think I think I I think I got it. <laughs> I, I like the creativity on this one. I, you know, I feel like my designs are often like, oh, here's a watch that exists, and I it's something that bothers me, and I fixed it. But this is sort of like maybe you're a little frustrated with Omega's limited editions and how they're always looking so far into the past. Maybe is that kind of where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it would be good to have like the celebration of modern space achievements. 
you know, generally I just, I, I also tend to get frustrated with all the focus on, on, on the task. I'm like, yeah, it was so great. It was, uh, you know, I don't want to do anything to take away from that. All, all right. right. I think Chris got a little lost. He wanted to show the whole video today. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, pretty entertaining. <laughs> it was very entertaining. Um, okay. So this is bloody, bloody, bloody interesting. What a great design, uh, Stephanie. Fantastic. Now you guys want to hear what I would change on that. So I have to read this because I paint, I actually um, stayed up a little bit to actually make these notes. Um, what I would change, instead of the subdials, I would keep them. And I would also keep the 12, 3, 6, and 9 on that dial. And the rest of the markers, since we have eight planets, eight planets, I would put all the eight planets up there on those markers. 12, 3, 6, and 9, and the eight planets. And what would I do? There is a ninth planet, a so-called ninth planet, which is called what? Guys, come on. We know this. It's called Pluto, right? <laughs> so at the back of the watch, instead of our favorite, favorite Snoopy puppy, we would put up Pluto at the back, <laughs> right there. <laughs> finally. I think that would, finally. Not, not another puppy. Snoopy watch. <laughs> yeah, so that would be a particularly, particularly special limited edition. What a fun for Stephanie with Pluto. So That's tell me what you guys think. Uh, I I like it. So I mean I, I didn't like grow this? up well I mean I didn't grow up with Peanuts and Snoopy and the, those guys. I just so I never really got into the, the Peanuts cartoon as much as everyone else did. So I Very like strange. You look like <laughs> Charlie Brown. <laughs> I know I like I mean I like it. You could be Charlie, I could be Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I am brown. <laughs> <laughs> You're just brown. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's. I thought it was a really clever idea. You know, let's move away from the Snoopy limited editions, and uh, I mean, how many, how many more can they come up with? Um, I know Mega. They have three versions, I think. Um, and I liked what Stephanie did with the three twenty one movement. Um, the Love new, it. Yeah, definitely the new. I know it's a people are a little controversial about the new movement being um, in a pretty expensive piece, but it's one of the best movements for a reason. So uh, you can't. Well, it's a great movement. Yeah. But uh, price. I mean, it's been around for you know what fifty years now or something. So mm -hmm. uh, I mean. I'm sure they've come up with so many new um, innovations in their the coaxials and um, you know the longer power reserves and things like that. So I just I just think you know we can bring some of their more classic movements into the more modern pieces. So I think I liked what she did though. Loved what she did. Love what she did. But what do you guys think about my? Innovation of those planets. Come on. <laughs> Quran. Not everything you have is a home run. <laughs> Conceded Quran, all right? Remember <laughs> that. And let me put that disclaimer up again, just in case you guys, right here. <laughs> and if you see the like and subscribe button while you're reading that disclaimer, just hit the bell icon too. <laughs> really looking for those comments. All right. What do you want well, me to do? <laughs> let's move on. Sales have been slow. <laughs> Well, you know, there's other things going on in the world. Sure, sure, Chris. You want to you want to lend me some money? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's uh, see what's going on next. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I really love IWC pilot watches, and particularly the big pilot. Um, those that may not know, I have uh, IWC Top Gun chronograph, the, the black ceramic one that's forty four and a half, and you know, it's it's a big watch, but I think it wears well. The big pilot for me is just a little, <coughs> a little bit too far. I think it's 46 and a half, if I remember right, um, or 46. And with those long lugs, 
even on people with decently sized wrists, I think it really pushes it. And so if you want like a time only IWC pilot, your options are kind of like the Mark 18 or the big pilot. So you've got 40 millimeters or 39 with the Spitfire and you've got 46 or 46 and a half or whatever. 46.1, Roberto says, thank you. Um, so I propose the IWC medium pilot and it's based on the big pilot, but sort of an enthusiast preference here with date gone. And I think for the cleanliness of the dial, it would be cool if they could move the power reserve um, to the case back. Keep, if, if it's possible, use that uh, same eight day movement in there. Again, we're playing, we're throwing physics and, and dimensions out the window here just to, for a dream world, right? Um, and here I'm going to throw a little bit of legacy out the window. No solid case back. I love that movement. I want to see it. So I'm going to go sapphire case back with somehow a power reserve display on it. And all right, that's a pretty cool idea. I like, I definitely like sapphire case back on everything. So, I mean, even the Edda movement or whatever it is, I want sapphire case back. We have the technology to do that. So. Let's, uh, I think, I mean, that's partly why we all like watches, you know. Well, it yeah. does take away from a pilot's, a true pilot's watch. A um, couple but... of things that I didn't agree with this timepiece. And okay. um, I think I actually called out uh, in regards to this. He made a little blunder, a little boo boo right there. Uh -oh. uh, he said, eight day, eight day. Uh -oh. Does he want a Portofino? Does he want a manual one timepiece? I think he was thinking uh, that, maybe. I don't think he was thinking about that. Does he want a GG? Uh, oh, well, um, you always want more days. Well, but you know, having a seven day at the back power reserve with an automatic timepiece with that rotor, actually, um, oh, sorry, medium pallet. Pardon, medium. I made a boo boo. Medium. Um, yeah. Um, uh, um, you know, having that seven day power reserve at the back with the rotor, with that Peloton rotor moving around. Yeah. would disturb that power reserve. It's not that it hasn't been done before with an automatic timepiece, um, oh, wow. time piece. Um, not with seven days, but I don't, I don't think it has. But uh, with three days, Banner, I did it with, uh, I think, 321. Um, but um, yeah, I just like that, you know, and he'll, he'll hate me for saying it. <laughs> I like that three cutoff. I love that seven day on it. Yeah, uh, I, I love the date window at the bottom. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's kind of like the fuel gauge or something. I don't know what they were doing. <laughs> as long as it's not that weird three day um, date window that they they have on some pieces, mm -hmm. uh, I'm mm -hmm. not a big fan of that. Um, the open date window, but I, yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't mind the just the normal date and um, the the way they had it for the other pieces. So. <laughs> But I like I like I like the forty three millimeters and um, no, it's it's great. I mean, um, we spoke about it on the channel where we could do a husband. Uh, we couldn't. I mean, I wish I was uh, somebody else in Rishmo, but it could become a husband and wife. Um, right, right. Like you know, watch son. because yeah, like the father and son. I think it's a great idea. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous timepiece. Um, um, with that onion crown. Yeah. Yep, definitely. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's. Uh, Chris, are you highlighting while I'm highlighting? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Someone's got to. All right, let's see what's next. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Oh, so, the video's not up, Chris. So oh. I, don't, I don't really love there, any like There it is. Eurasian. <laughs> Dan, I'm sorry, this is just not a bright link that I'm super in love with right now. Um, these are people that I like and like might be interested in, but that it, what I would actually buy, like I'm not so sure. Um, so I wanted to take a fresh look at IWC and like what, what watch would I have. Um, I really love the black ceramic um, Top Gun, or Top Gun edition. Arthur, the one that you have, the chronographic, it is just epically cool. It's super technical looking just like a badass watch and it's too giant for me to wear but maybe let me borrow it on 
institutions. I like literally can't destroy it. Um, so I'll, I'll work on you for, for trying that one out. Um, but the, the three-hander Top Gun, um, I think is, is beautiful. And like, it's, I think it would be neat to make the size a little bit more for smaller wrists, um, but in particular market to, to ladies wrists. Um, and to me, 36 millimeters is like the perfect size for watches, just like hands down, it works for everything. So I downsize this to 36 um, in my, you know, changing for this, uh, changing for this world. Um, I would take out reference to Top Gun, it's not a Top Gun watch anymore, and try to do a reference to like famous female pilots. And so here, like, I don't know if you can see in the text, but I just be like Earhart, right? Like, Amelia Earhart, or like one of the other famous, mm -hmm. you know, lady pilots that are like, out there. Uh, Bessie um, Coleman. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I think having something that still looks like, you know, a little bit masculine of this like black, like very technical, <clears throat> kind of aggressive watch is, is, is cool. I totally see myself wearing this. Like, yeah, you know, I love my, like, all, all right. That's a great idea. I think, um, I like, sure, you know, okay. the crossover with the air heart. So what did, what did you think of that? So one, I need to say this before. Um, I think um, Stephanie is winning it all the way from Arthur. She she got some good <laughs> pieces right there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, long jeans would have a huge problem because Erhat uh, is um, um, part of uh, long jeans' brand ambassador program. But um, I wouldn't change a thing, of course. Um, I did uh, mention that the Houdinki was similar, but I do get where it, you know, she was talking about the patina and everything. Um, yes, a ladies' watch, definitely. I mean, what is a ladies' watch today was an old men's watch at that point because women are wearing larger timepieces. And I think that's amazing because um, it always works in the business when it used to be, you know, 80% men, 20% women buying timepieces, but it's become 50 50. Um, <clears throat> what I would change on that instead of the name in the front. Who, whoever it would be, the ladies pilot. I would, you know, you you guys remember the Da Vinci uh, when they reintroduced it with the Kurt Kloss edition with yeah. his face at the back. Um, I would actually, since everybody likes open case bags, <laughs> I would put the ladies pilots, whoever the pilot may be, uh, design the face as a rotor and put it in the back, a tribute to the ladies pilot. That is, yeah, that is an awesome idea. Uh, I mean, it, this is fantasy, so they could use air hearts. So, whether, yeah, like, of course. I um, mean, it's just that, you know, since Long Jeans has yeah. an ambassador. Yeah, yeah. 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 But I just, I just thought that, but instead of putting that in the front, I would rather um, make a better tribute because, you know, these watchmakers are so fantastic. We talk about beautiful case packs, beautiful work, beautiful artistry. Why can't you make a rotor in a shape of a face? Well, yeah, I you mean, know? they can do everything except uh, make a 100 meter water resistant Panerai. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, With a <the> swan neck <laughs> right <laughs> around the crown. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's see what's next. Talk us through this step by step, right? Yes. So I'm proposing a Bulgari by Hermes collaboration, which I'm sure would happen. Like that, that just feels natural. <laughs> um, I think the Depenzi watches that Bulgari makes, but in particular, like the jeweled ones, where like there's scales on you know each of the like there's individual jewels on each of the, the scales that they make is so neat. And for those of you who haven't seen these, like the heads pop open to have to have the watch in them. Um, Arthur and I were lucky to visit in Paris a few years ago that had like a whole bunch of these and they're just like so beautiful and crazy and, and stunning. Um, anyway, go to the next slide, please. Um, so, the, so those the ones you've shown exist and now you're making some modifications, right? Exactly, yes. I'm making it very critical modica modifications. But um, for me personally, like I don't have any affinity towards snakes, so it's not like a thing I like or do. and not that I could ever afford one of these. Um, I just like to look at them and appreciate them. Nor would I like ever have an occasion to wear like a bejeweled snake around my my wrist. Like I'm not going to galas and you know red carpet events. But let's <laughs> we're in green world joy. Um, anyway, but what I do love is is horses. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know that like 
I'm out of the barn all the time. I, I ride horses. I always have. Um, I, I like to have some jewelry with like a little, um, you know, I like the Hermes enamel bracelets and um, some of their scarves and always like having like little horse things in there, trying not to be like too much of like a crazy horse girl at 35, but whatever <laughs> yeah. I am from whom I am. Um, so I decided to make this collaboration. You can go ahead and see the atrocity on the next slide. You ready? Okay, here we go. <laughs> okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> looking for like horse head images of like you know something fancy from our maze I, I don't know this pops up in google images and it's all those stupid like maps that you put on so I think like I think this is really like to perfection um jewelry yeah. design um <laughs> that is so <laughs> startling <laughs> so I purposely didn't sip my wine um <laughs> No, 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 no. I did not not like the design. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie says it with so much conviction. It is amazing. I think she did amazing. This is one of the most. <laughs> I think you would actually buy that. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Stephanie would buy it for sure. Uh, this was actually um, hilarious. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> it was unbelievable and um, um, very creative. Uh, one, I definitely prefer horses than snakes. All right? Okay. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I want to tell Stephanie something. Yeah. You do not need to. And I love Bulgari. I love Bulgari. And people on this uh channel also love bulgari and exactly mike everybody said godfather watch at yeah that there were like five yeah. <laughs> yeah um i love bulgari but you do not have to tie up with bulgari with this watch now what i would change with this timepiece um you know we all know the cape cod by hermes beautiful piece you can get the wrap around cape cod so you don't need the serpentine so let's take the bulgari out of the way what i would do with horses is it's got a lovely square dial. You can make the dial into a race course. And how, <laughs> you know, a lot of time pieces could have, uh, you know, they have those mystery watches by Frank yeah. Mueller, Louis Vuitton does it. Mm -hmm. A lot of brands do it. You do two horses on that mystery dial, two running horses on that mystery dial, and you start it at 12. And then obviously the minute hand goes first. Oh, I'm going the other way around, right? The minute hand goes first, whichever way, and then the hour hand catches up eventually. So you'll always have two horses racing. But this particular <laughs> red ration <laughs> stole the show, just like every horse. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you show horses, you know, this this one. I mean, I, I really yeah. like what you did. But I mean, honestly, I, I don't mind the snake just because it's. Uh, you know, my, what do you call it? Zodiac animal. So uh, I would have stuck with the snake, but. Um, Chris, no, not everybody's Asian, all right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We like horses. We did not yeah, really I know. like snakes. My, I'm in the minority. <laughs> but yes. For I a think... change. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, the, it was a, it's a great idea. It's just, I don't know if horses have that long of a body that. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I definitely appreciate like creative. You know, I would say something else, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> we're, we're trying to monetize this, Quran. So yes, of course. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> but, no, but great, um, great thing. But you know, we don't have too much with Bulgari. We can do the horse thing. Right, but right. just for that, just for that, I'm going to announce this on this channel right now, and I mean it. I mean it. I will get it done. Um, Arthur and Stephanie, when things, uh, Stephanie and Arthur, I must say, uh, when things get better, um, and Longines always has a lovely, um, you know, little thing with horses, the show jumping in Las Vegas. And I would love, love, love to see you guys down here for that. And 
it's VIP. I can't take you for the derby or the derby, as we all say here. It's not English, but um, we <laughs> will definitely, um, uh, you know, try and arrange something for you. That sounds like an awesome event. And Chris, you can go for the snake show after that. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Karan. You really helped. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let's move on to the last one. And this is a special one. This is not, this is a watch we wish existed for Dan's sake. So he's gone but not forgotten, and we wanted to create something uh, that he would like best. I think it was uh, Koos who said he missed talking about Breitling. So I tried to take you know, a, a watch that Dan loves, and I think he said, always says he owns his Braille watch, right? It's that Navitimer 806. But there's another watch that's really, really elusive, and he picked it in one of our challenges in the past, and we have not been able to find one to buy. It's not the expense, it's not its popularity that's holding us back. Uh, it's just, I think they're out of production, and that was the Mr. Bean wacky tie watch. So I thought, what could be a more like pure expression of Dan uh, than than what I've created here? Oh my god! So this is <laughs> Navitimer eight hundred six reedition Dan X Mister Bean collaboration, and I think it just sort of like sums up his personality in one watch. This like serious love of aviation and vintage pilot watch design with that like great sense of humor and the wackiness of mr b so you know sure maybe his like the grumpy looking sub dial to be the running seconds instead i don't know i'm not going to argue over the finer points of the masterpiece that's on display here but this one's for dan uh i think people people will like it uh roberto has made a great point show the case back i didn't think that far I think there's a lot of room for real, real creativity on the case back. I think like a really nice um, engraved or embossed uh, portrait of Mr. Bean would be pretty cool. Um, you know, something along those lines. Roberto's also got a great name for it, the Bean Pilot. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with that. That's awesome. So George Kern, if you're if you're listening or or watch Fred. The uh, Breitling collector who helped advise on some of these re-editions. I think you should really be considering this because I think you'd make uh, one one guy in the UK very very happy. <laughs> so that's I all it. I got. I think, I, I think it's, it's it's really it's quite excellent. Um, a little a little terrifying, but um, that's good tribute to Dan. <laughs> well, that is insane. I, I think Arthur caught up to Stephanie with this one. <laughs> uh, no, actually, she was it with that um, <laughs> horse hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually want to see them. Um, uh, you know, actually, guys, if you guys don't know, on Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning, if you press that bell icon and subscribe, you will see Art, Stephanie and Arthur on the show. And uh, I really want to see that horse mask um, that they were talking about. Um, not a snake mask, uh, but anyway, this I would not change. Uh, if all of you guys know Dan, um, what a lovely guy, great times, uh, great person, loves Breitling, loves Mr. Bean apparently a lot more, um, and that wacky type type watch, uh, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> um, Great, great thing. And this time I won't change the subtitles because that is so bloody Dan. Um, it is so bloody Dan. Um, you know, we spoke about the case back and, you know, trying to do it like the Snoopy, calling it, you know, probably also the Beantling. Um, I'm sorry? Yes, yes. Arthur did say that they need the teddy in there as well. But um, lovely, lovely thing. But Seventy still wins. That that Hermes Bulgari <laughs> Godfather. Anything doing with Godfather um, yeah. wins. <laughs> so that's it. It's like so. I'm gonna drop the mic on that one right there. <laughs> that was definitely the most creative. I I always it appreciate was. that in watches. 
um, you know, all the crazy ones that are, they're usually really, really pretty crazy expensive, like the, you know, Christophe Clorets and those, those type of things. But um, I think that horse head just, that would be high horology right there. That stole the show. That's it. That's it. Like, I mean, I have been in the business for so bloody long and yeah. I have not, have not seen anything yeah. like that in my life. It, they usually try to be like super subtle, like the Ralph Lauren, uh, the horse, uh, what do you call it? The hoof shape uh, watch that they have. So they, they usually don't try to smack you in the face with it. You mean you're talking about Polo? No, no, no. The there's the Ralph Lauren watch that had um it was like in the shape. Oh, of, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, where it's yeah. like, oh, it's subtly like equestrian, but I, I like mm -hmm. I'd rather just be like, Yeah, this is a horse watch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> it sure is. But it's a great, great, great uh design that she did. <laughs> I still can't well, get over it. Like, <laughs> it's like a B movie, like <laughs> it, it it works so well. Mm. It does. I I can't stop laughing. I have to get on camera. <laughs> yeah, you can't um, see that right now. <laughs> so anyway, so let's talk about Saturday today. Um Saturday at nine o'clock in the morning, we are definitely interviewing Stephanie and Arthur. Yep. You know, I probably may have said Chris a couple of times as well. Uh, but um, I also want to put, um, I want to do a giveaway on Saturday at nine o'clock. And uh, it's kind of interesting. I want to do a giveaway. And um, guys, you guys tell me whoever wants to join that channel after we're done with Stephanie and Arthur's interview, we, you're going to go up with them. So they're going to be four more, uh, two more people added. Yep. So it's going to be Stephanie, Arthur, Chris, two more guests, and me on that channel. And I'm going to do a trivia. And what you're going to win with that trivia, whoever wins that trivia, wins a Yuli Snada hat and a mystery box from Glass Suter. And Mike, you already have this one. So you can still join the trivia, but we'll give it to the runner-up. <laughs> it's something from Glass Suter. So, yeah. So please uh, uh, yeah. text me if you have my number, or you can put it right here, whoever's ready to be on this. You have to be on video. You have to have your hands where I can see them, only because Google's not going to help you. Yeah, is uh, <laughs> is no one gonna comment on the Cowboys right now? You you definitely uh, are really for a reason. <laughs> we're the champions of the world at the moment, sir. We're the champions uh, of the moment. world. I mean, yeah, <laughs> you're, yeah. You're Not the Super Bowl, but we're the champions of the world. Oh, okay, okay. In terms of brand recognition, maybe. All right. So, 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 listen, 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 listen. One second, one second. Let me let me clear this right here. I'm at least a Cowboys fan. Okay. I'm the only Indian that's a Cowboys fan. <laughs> that's right? really admitted. One, one. However, you are a Patriots fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sorry. What are you many, talking about? How many Super Bowls do you have right now? You have one more than I do. Yeah. in uh, With Tom Brady. With Tom Brady. Okay, so. Yeah. How many so, Super Bowls do you get after this? Uh, we'll see. It's only been a year, so let's yeah, sure. Give With it Cam a, Newton, I mean, you only have uh, you don't have any after Aikman, so let's let's see how you guys do. Come you got, down, you got your, your <laughs> <laughs> either way. We're both uh, we're both not going anywhere this year. You're definitely not. I still do have a chance, mate, because my division sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so anyway, guys, anybody wants to be on the channel uh, off, for five to ten minutes after Stephanie and Arthur are done, we'll do that trivia. Yep. 
where we can actually, there'll be some interesting questions, very tough ones. So if you want to, please send me a message. Only if you like and subscribe, though. I won't put you on the channel otherwise. <laughs> you got to be a subscriber. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to end. We'll, we'll see you guys uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. Absolutely. Hope you guys like the show. Sorry uh, if uh, we ruined your designs, uh, Stefan Art. And we'll see you yeah. guys soon. See you guys. Bye. Take care. Thank you.